video a few days ago about the UV-5R I've received hundreds of comments, some of them online, some of them off uh, other ways. Stand by, right after this we'll find out why. After I purchased the UV-5R and did the video I started looking around and this guy's comments are quite accurate. He writes, this is about a five-year-old subject that has been debated to death all over the web. It has, but most of what I read, the, the debate, and the conclusions from the debate, I believe have the wrong answer. And I'll try to make a case for why I believe that the device is flat out illegal. No exceptions, no equivocation. It just doesn't belong being sold. Cal, I think he means California escapee because there are lots of those. He writes, 32 bucks? You paid too much. He's probably right. Um, this guy writes, uh, you can use it on the hand bands if, if you have a boat. Or sorry, you can use it on the marine bands if you have a boat. I guess if you don't have a boat, you can't use it there. Anyway, uh, also the FRS and GMRS um, can be used. Ethan Poole, who generally writes really good comments, answered this guy and explained to him why it's not legal to do that. Uh, James writes, here I was under the impression they were not considered legal because you could program GMRS and uh, FR, uh, family service radio frequencies. Um, he describes uh, the rules regarding that. Um, this guy writes, I have the UV-3R and two of the UV-5R radios and never buy another. He's not happy with the way they work and I tend to agree with him. There are some issues. Lawrence, a uh, one, a two, a three, Welk writes, I've been exposed to ham radio since I was a kid. And believe me, if it had cost two dollars to three hundred dollars for entry level HT, or I, I think he means two hundred to three hundred dollars, for an entry level HT, I would be without a license. I would encourage people who um, can't afford much to join a local radio club. There's always somebody. There's always an estate sale. There's lots of equipment out there that's very inexpensive and works great. Uh, ben writes, I am building an AM transmitter. You may or may not be familiar with the Pine Board project. Long story short, I could build it to transmit wherever I felt like. Well, yeah, you could, but it wouldn't be legal. It's my responsibility to stay within my boundaries. Um, well, first of all, they're not your boundaries. They are the FCC regulations in Part 97 uh, and other places. Um, transmit wherever I felt like. Actually, not. And let's go to the FCC regulations right after I do a few more of these. And there were several along those lines. I can build whatever I want as long as I keep it uh, in the handbags. Uh, this guy writes, there are no such restrictions for use by licensed amateurs. No one is going to get into trouble for owning and using UV-5Rs or any other Chinese HT. What possible good do you think you're doing ham radio community by spreading alarmist nonsense? Um, I was offended by that because uh, this is not nonsense, it's not alarmist, I believe it to be the case, and for 55 years uh, I have worked towards supporting amateur radio in many ways, as a planning commissioner, as a member of the school board for eight years, a hospital volunteer, uh, fire department volunteer. Uh, Cal California Department of Forestry. Um, I've done a lot for amateur radio. Uh, this guy writes, how can you say it isn't legal? If you don't transmit on those frequencies and disable transmit with chirp, how is it not legal? Okay, I'll explain that. He calls my video clickbait and that uh, uh, he hates it because I posted crap. This is not crap. Um, it happens to be Part of the FCC regulations, and we'll get to that in just a minute. 
Ron Poole writes a ham, and he misspells ham, is allowed to build a radio and use it. A radio you can build can transmit on any frequency. Uh, not really. And a ham is, um, it can be capital H-A-M or H-A-M. Uh, it is not uh, an acronym. It is a word that derived from ham-handed. I think it is not about that you can transmit, but about if you do transmit on certain frequencies. Um, that's partially true, but you, yes, you can build, uh, and I don't know what that has to do with the discussion here. Yes, you can build a, a, a transmitter or a radio. There's certainly a distinction to be made when you go to manufacture, advertise, sell, distribute that radio then you run afoul of the SEC. So as an individual ham, yes, you can build a transmitter. When you go to sell those things, they have to meet the FCC regulations. And it makes sense that they have to do that. We have to have some regulations. Otherwise, there would be chaos. And can you imagine um, somebody interfering with uh, fire dispatch or police dispatch? This guy also misspelled ham, so there's got to be some source that's doing that. I completely, I disagree completely. A ham can build a radio from scratch, and that's legal. Yeah, it's down to the licensed individual to police themselves. No. Um, I guarantee you that most other hams own radios that can transmit on channels. Well, we have frequencies, not so much channels. That may be the case, but that has nothing to do with the discussion because somebody else has something. Uh, that can transmit it or do something else it has nothing to do with the UV5R. So let's stick to the subject which is UV5R, not what somebody happens to have. The technician class I took said you can modify and build radios. Um, yeah, but there are limits and they're very specific. We're going to have to go look at the FCC rules. But need to be aware of the channels. There you go again, the channels you transmit on. It's almost as if this is the same guy. Um, uh, Kenneth H. writes, as a Part 97 radio, which it is not, the UV5R radios are legal, which they are not, and you won't be affected by a September ban. I don't know about that. As licensed amateurs, it is our job not to use the equipment in a legal manner, uh, which is true. He says, also, for Part 97, there's no real equipment standard that has to be met. There is. Uh, and we need to go look at that just real quick because it's, I think it's pretty clearly spelled out. Um, this one really got my attention and it brought up um, something I wasn't aware of. He writes, what about the recent FCC letter about the Chinese dual band radios? I did get that. And uh, I'm going to go to that in just a minute. Let's first look at the FCC regulations. Part 97 are the FCC rules specifically addressing the amateur radio service. And note that it's the amateur radio service. We are a licensed radio service. It doesn't call us a hobby. In fact, I don't think there's a mention of hobby anywhere in here. I watched a guy's video and he talks about ARS being the amateur radio spectrum. That is not what this is. This is a licensed radio service. We are regulated by the FCC. Um, so let's scroll down. And by the way, these are some of the best written regulations. Uh, if, you, if you haven't read them, it's a fairly easy read. They're comprehensive, detailed and so well written it's uh, it's almost staggering. Um, I've been on committees, commissions and other places where we where we wrote regulations locally in this county and they were no, nowhere near as good as these are. General provi provisions, basis and purpose. The rules and regulations in this part are designed to provide an amateur radio service having a fundamental purpose as expressed in the following principles, recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur radio service to the public as a voluntary, 
non-commercial communication service service, particularly with respect to providing emergency communications, which we do incredibly well. Continuation and extension of the amateur's proven ability to contribute to the advancement of the radio art, which is absolutely true. Encouragement and improvement of the amateur radio service through rules which provide for advancing skills in both communications and technical phases of the art. Expansion of the existing reservoir within the amateur radio service of trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts. In other words, it encourages folks to become technically oriented or a good operator. Continuation and extension of the amateur's unique ability to enhance international goodwill. Um, in, when I said they're so well written, they really are. For example, this is a section that just has definitions. Amateur radio operator person named in an amateur radio operator primary license station grant. Grant. Um, amateur radio services. Uh, so let's scroll down. Um, talks about bandwidth and what the bandwidth can be. Uh, everything else is regulated. If you think that they aren't regulated by the FCC, you haven't looked at the rules. Um, it goes down to simple things like um, broadcasting, which you're not supposed to do. When you identify, how you identify. Um, external power amplifiers, there's a lot about that, harmful interference, uh, the transmission of bulletins, it describes what a physician is, national radio quiet zone. Um, one of the videos I watched, the guy complained that the FCC had, quote, backloaded some new regulations. Uh, most of these regulations have been in place for a very long time. They may have been rewritten and improved. But, for example, this is 1989. Um, and let's just pretend real quick, and I'll, I'll make it real fast. Let's say that Amazon wanted the two-meter amateur band. And Amazon hired a bunch of attorneys who are specialists. Maybe they work for the FCC. They're specialists in the spectrum. They do studies, they write papers, they gather all the evidence they need to present a case in front of the FCC that the two-meter amateur band would be a better service if it were given over to Amazon.com. Maybe Amazon was going to use it for those delivery machines, but for whatever. Uh, the delivery, that might make, make sense because that way they could control them and, and go through buildings uh, using satellites. So the FCC commissioners listen to the attorneys present their case, which is overwhelmingly convincing. And I've been in a committee where things like that happen. And the FCC gives over the two-meter amateur band to Amazon. That's it. They're done. Uh, you can appeal, uh, but the FCC has the right to do that if they believe that that's a better use of those frequencies. Keep that in mind when you're talking about whether or not the FCC can come along and change things. They certainly can, and they do. Um, if you think you're not regulated or you can transmit wherever you want to or occupy whatever bandwidth you want, take a look at the regulations. I'm not going to read them because it will take too long, but pretty much um, everything is covered. No person shall obtain or attempt to obtain, or assist another person to obtain, or attempt to obtain, is that legal lease, an amateur service license. Again, we are a service. It doesn't say hobby. Everything in here is covered. Everything is regulated. Uh, the bandwidth that you transmit on, the frequencies that you transmit on, the modes that you transmit, all those things are controlled by the FCC. And they need, to, and that's the way that it should be. Now, I mentioned that there was a letter, so let's get over to that letter. Um, 
As I said, uh, this guy wrote, what about the recent FCC letter about the Chinese dual band radios? I did find that, and it is a public notice of an FCC enforcement advisory. And the FCC does have police. They do carry guns, and they do enforce the rules. Um, what I found was a lot of folks had concentrated on the section about amateur radio and an exception. So I've taken that from the document and boil it down to um, to this. Basically, I pasted it up and added um, colors for emphasis. So bear with me here. Here's the amateur exception from that FCC enforcement. And it says, there is one exception to the certification requirement. If a device is capable of operating only on frequencies, only on frequencies that the FCC has allocated for use by amateur radio service licensees. It does not require FCC equipment authorization and an amateur license may use his or her license to operate such radios. The key word here is it only transmits on the handband. It goes on to say, however, many two-way radios that purport to operate on amateur frequencies also operate on frequencies that extend beyond the designated amateur frequency bands. And here's a key sentence. If a two-way, and again, VHF, UHF, because that's what we're talking about. If a two-way VHF, UHF radio is capable of operating outside of the amateur frequency bands, it cannot be imported, advertised, sold. It cannot be operated within the United States. Period. It goes on to say the Bureau, and then we're talking about the Enforcement Bureau, an arm of the FCC. The Bureau, the Enforcement Bureau, will take very seriously any reports of failures of two way amateur radio operators to comply with all relevant rules and requirements when using devices in the amateur bands. And then it says it again in case you missed it. A VHF UHF radio is capable of operating a UHF UHF radio capable of operating outside of the amateur frequencies cannot be imported, advertised, sold, or operated without an FCC equipment certification. So here you go, straight from the FCC. If a two-way radio, and we're talking about the UV5R, is capable of operating outside of the amateur frequency bands, it cannot be operated, period. I don't think it can be any more clear than that. You're talking about the amateur radio service. If you can operate outside the hand bands, it's illegal. And that's exactly what it says. It's not alarmist. It's not doing a disservice to the amateur radio community. It's explaining what's in their um, uh, bulletin, and it's under the amateur radio exception. There is an exception for equipment that only transmits in the handbands. That exception goes away when it's capable of transmitting outside of the handbands. And that's exactly the problem with the UV-5R. And that's the answer. The UV-5R is illegal to uh, import advertise, sell, or operate within the United States. And can't be any more clear than that. If you have a comment, or if you interpret this in a different way, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, keep the comments civil. Uh, don't attack the messenger. Please. I'm Jim W6LG for Hammer Radio Basics. Thanks for watching, and 